In today's installment of the APOC video series, you want to look at dynamically creating nodes and relationships, especially with dynamic uh, labels, relationship types, and uh, properties. Uh, so for that, I exported our movie graph with APOC export CSV into three CSV files and placed them into the import folder. So you can find the import folder to, uh, by opening a uh, manage tab uh, for your database and then on the open folders button there's a drop down where we can open the input folder and here you can see the three CSV files one is movies which just has title and released uh, as two columns for all the movies uh, the people CSV has the name uh, the birth year and uh, a label an additional label that we want to set besides person so you can see either actor or director or nothing and um, then actor CSV is basically the relationship so we have the name of the person name of the movie and uh, the type of the relationship so there might be also different types of relationships for the same movie for instance if someone directed and acted in a, a movie and then the roles as an optional um, property where for multi roles we have semicolon separated uh, entries here Okay, cool. With that, uh, let's look at uh, the Infinity Browser for, for our database. And we can just use a load CSV with headers from uh, file um, movies.csv as row, return row. So this is our data, as you know. And now we could just uh, use regular cipher uh, to um, create our movies. And uh, what we can do here is either just uh, set the whole row as um, as properties on our movie. That's the easiest way. Uh, if you use plus equals, then um, each of these rows, which are maps basically, uh, get added. In this case, it does not make a big difference because the movie is freshly created. And uh, otherwise, you can also, of course, spell it out. Uh, for instance, if you want to turn this year into a into an integer. So, and there are two ways of doing that, of course. Uh, so, we can do set m dot uh, title equals row dot title, uh, comma m dot released equals row dot released, and we call two integer on this one. Two integer on this one. Um, this is something that we can do. Uh, but if you want to go uh, with the previous syntax that I showed you, uh, where we assign a map to the uh, movie, we can just use um, the pattern, uh, the map projections that I showed in the last uh, video. And where we say, okay, for, for the row, we want to have the title attribute, and for the released attribute, we want to uh, call to integer on this one. So we could also uh, use the syntax like that for more complex ones. So we could also say, okay, we take everything, and then for a few, we have dedicated entries, which would then overwrite the ones that we already have. Okay, cool. And so let's let's do that, and we create uh, thirty-eight movies, which you then can see, of course, in our in our database. So of course, you want to have the. Oops. We should have. Oh, I said titles, not title. So um, let's just clean it out, match, and detach, delete, and so rid of them and it's of course not titles but title okay let's rerun this query here and you see that on uh, now the um the titles are there okay cool uh, so for people actually it looks a li little bit different uh, so if you load people csv return a row you see that we don't just have the name in the uh, birth here, but we also have this additional label, which we can't really do in Cypher, except if we were to like filter and do a multi-pass thing where we say where uh, row uh, row dot label equals actor, and then create the actors and, and, and so on, which is quite a lot of, especially if you have a lot of variability here in the in this one. So what we could do is we could just create people and then just do a second round where we set the labels based on um, based on this entry. 
uh, but we can also just create a node directly. So we call epoch create a node, and here we pass in. Um, of course, you want to have uh, these things being person, and also uh, row dot label, and um, as well, and then we. Uh, also want to provide the other properties, so we can just say uh, row. Um, we can say title is row dot title and uh, sorry, name is row dot name, and born is two integer from row dot born. So and that's our call to uh, create a node. So we yield a node and return. Um, Add a count, or we can actually return uh, these nodes. Right. So let's see if this works. Uh, doesn't like us, so because uh, some of these uh, rows have an empty uh, label, um, so we would have to uh, to skip that, and um, we can uh, do this easiest by um, By doing what? Uh, by creating a second list. Case row label when empty string, then empty list else. Not label. And so we have person and our other label. So there uh, should be an some other ways with split and things like that, but that's a quick way of doing that. And now we have all our people, and you see that they not just have uh, person nodes, but we also have actor nodes and uh, director nodes. So we should also uh, be able to see them. So if we say an actor is uh, red and the director is yellow, we see uh, actually you want to see these directors in another color. So, and person is gray. So, actually, it should show them correctly. So, this is an actor in person, and this is. Um, so, we see them uh, as well. And uh, the same is possible with uh, relationships, of, as of course. So, if we load our. Our uh, actors.csv, which is basically the relationships, we have the type here as a uh, dynamic relationship type, and uh, so we can find our uh, person uh, with the name row dot name and our movie with uh, title row dot title, and then we just call apple create relationship. Uh, from the node uh, person with the relationship type row dot uh, type, and as properties we just use um, row uh, dot. So we just extract the roles uh, property from from row, and um, as target is our uh, movie yield relationship return. Uh, should give us the all the relationships here. Okay, cool. And that means that now we have uh, 250 relationships in our database with all the um, relationship types coming dynamically from these things. Um, so what else can we do? We can of course also say um, we take these, uh, for instance, the people. And uh, we say with row where row dot label is not empty, so we just skip these, and then we just find uh, a person uh, with this name, and then we call epoch epoch uh, create add labels, and then we pass in a person and Row dot uh, label, 
so we can uh, just add these uh, labels also dynamically to these this node. So this shouldn't do anything because um, shouldn't do anything because they already have these labels. So it doesn't like me uh, because it's not called person.csv but people.csv. So it now uh, just um, return these. Okay. Um, what else can we do? We can of course uh, also uh, change uh, some things. So you find uh, these uh, functions in under creating data here. Um, so we had create, create node, create nodes where I can pass in one label uh, array, but then an array of uh, properties so it creates all the nodes from this from this array. Uh, same for add labels, I can pass in a single node and node ID, many node IDs or many nodes and set uh, add labels or remove labels. Um, we can do the same for properties, so we can have dynamic uh, key value properties. So for instance, if I were to um, set uh, dynamically generated uh, properties on on node. So for instance, if I found all of my movies and would want to set uh, call uh, apoc uh, create set uh, property, we can uh, take our movie and for instance uh, to a string uh, of random and then uh, our value would be 42, so this is, is our key, and this is our value, and then each of these nodes uh, here, node, return node, and then each of these nodes uh, gets an additional random property. So you see that we have a lot of new property keys, which you wouldn't usually do, of course. Okay, what else can we do? Um, we set, can set relationship properties as well. And um, the other thing uh, that's really useful is uh, that we can also use this with merge. Uh, so we can also, instead of, um, let's just uh, clean out, oops, clean out the database. Um, so uh, if you were to do uh, the uh, person thing here, This one, uh, instead of um, if we would um, use merge node first, then this would be our uh, our label. And um, let's remove the dynamic label for the time being. But then we could say, okay, our merge key is uh, this one, and our additional properties are these. Uh, so you basically uh, pass in two separate uh, maps, one for the uh, merge properties, the key properties, and one for the additional properties. So you can also use uh, dyna dynamic arrays here, because as you might know, in merge we can't uh, really use a map uh, to pass in the uh, to pass in the, the merge properties. So if I run this, it would create uh, all our people here again, and this time with the uh, only with the person label. But if I run this twice, so what I could actually he do here is uh, where row dot label is not empty string, I could call um, apoc create add labels, and then I have my node, and for the node I add the label uh, row dot label. Yet node s n two. So and now I get uh, added all my uh, additional labels here in the second bit. So I ran merge again, so it didn't create new data, but it just merged uh, the existing ones based on this map, and then I, I get this. Okay, and uh, something else that I want to show you in this uh, together with this uh, thing is um, that we can also use uh, APOC map clean uh, with data from node CSV. So if I load my data from the people uh, data here and want to just remove the, the label property if it's not there, um, then we can just say return uh, row 
Um, so you see that I have a bunch of those where the uh, label is empty. And if I don't want to have these, I can just use uh, epoch map clean my map. And then I keys, the keys that I want to remove, I don't want to remove any keys, but I want to remove all the values that are empty strings. So, and if I run this, then these maps would uh, have one less uh, property here and the label would be completely removed. So that's quite useful for cleaning up uh, input data that comes from CSV or JSON or similar. And with that, I want to conclude uh, today's uh, video recording. Uh, if you have more questions, join us on Slack and ask your questions there or follow this bit.ly link to go to the Epoch repository, which also links the documentation or watch the other Epoch videos on YouTube. Thank you.